Hey, hey everyone, it's Come Follow Me time again, and we're into John, first book of John. So, to start off with, let's look at who John is, or was. Actually, he still is, so there you go. Um, this is taken from, took some of it from the Come Follow Me manual, took some of it from the Bible Dictionary, it's pretty much it. Um, of course, there's probably deeper explanations as to who John is, and we have a lot more interesting insight into that. Um, but for you, basically, uh, John was a disciple of John the Baptist first, who became one of the first followers of Christ. And that's what we read about is their meeting and interaction in this particular chapter. Um, hey, yeah, John and John the Baptist actually introduced them. He wrote the Gospel of John, which is what we're studying right now. He also wrote Revelation and he wrote three epistles, which are we um, are sometimes, well, sometimes they're referred to as the Johannine epistles. Uh, but we know them pretty much as 1st John, 2nd John, 3rd John. And they're letters to people that just have really awesome goodness in them. And we'll get to those later in the year when we study there. Um, he was known to Jesus as the Beloved, as John the Beloved. And referred to himself as whom Jesus loved. It's in chapter 13, verse 23. And you know, do you feel confident you could say that about yourself? Like, hi, I'm Lorraine, who Jesus loved. So I don't know, I'm pretty sure he loves me. But I think they must have had a really special relationship to be able to claim that. So I think that's pretty cool. Um, and then such was his faith and desire to bring others to Christ that he requested to remain on earth until Christ comes again. So John is with us still doing the work he loves. And it's like, so that's who John was and who he is. Because he still is among us somewhere. Interesting. And there's a lot of theories around that, and go ahead and read them if you want to. But honestly, you probably wouldn't know him if you encountered him anyway. And the work he does is largely just sort of, I don't know, they're in a state of him and the three Nephites. They're in a state, and there could be others even. It's in the state of somewhere in between mortality and immortality. So they're not quite either. Um, it's an interesting concept. And the physics of it, the actual science of it, I'm going to leave to Christ, because that's way beyond my education. And I think for most of us, just just feel the truth of it and don't get too caught up in how does that happen and, and where are they and the many theories that there are out there. They're interesting. We don't need to deep dive into them. We're going to look at John 1, 1 through 5. So this starts off with, and we overlap in some of these insights as to what the scriptures are, because we're only studying the one book of John, 1st John, this, like, John chapter 1. Um, so, like, there's a little lap over, but it's, it's interesting, this is just about, this is, like, where Jesus got popular, and kind of where he started, and he started getting followers and friends that just wanted to be with him. So it's kind of like those experiences, remember last week we discussed how he interacted with others and how it affected them, and did it affect Christ? So this is Christ interacting as an adult now. Um, so John starts off because his main audience that he's writing to um, is, is people that, again, were waiting to hear of this promised Messiah. So he starts off with a bold statement of, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Um, the same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and darkness comprehendeth it not. And I'm going to talk more about darkness in the next one, uh, in light. But, so Christ is the word. What does this mean? And is this familiar to you? Because this is also at the beginning of Genesis. So this is a statement that has been used before, when Moses wrote down Genesis. Um, in the beginning... There was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So what does that mean? What what are they talking about? How is Jesus a Word? Um, so Jesus being the Word here means that he came to testify of himself and of God. Um, he came to witness that he was the Messiah. That, uh, that's his Word, um, was that I am who I am, Right. And we've we read that before, and we've gone like, well, what does that mean? It means that he's Christ. It's like I am what I am. Like I'm, I don't I don't have words for it to describe exactly who I am. I just am him. 
um, it would be like someone saying to me, so what are you, Lorraine? And I'm like, I'm a human, I, I'm a Christian. Like, what, what are you getting at? Like, it's a hard question to answer if you really think about it. So, yeah, anyway. Um, so it says there, yeah, like he was in the beginning, there was the word, so there's Christ. He was with God. We know that because we were there too. And then he was God, as in he became part of the Godhead. So that's what that means. Um, and as part of the Godhead, he had then had pre-mortal roles. So he had the larger witnessing to come do, and he knew what that was. Further evidence that he is the saviour in his creation of all things in verse 3. He is life, the light of this world. And it's a bold opening statement, as I said, from John. Um, again, from Genesis, same thing. Also check out the Joseph Smith translation of these verses. And you'll find that, like, I've got one of these lovely journal Bibles, because I love those. Well, the journal we saw last year, my Old Testament was, you know, like three kilos. This is a lot better. New Testament's a lot better. But at the back of that, back of the New Testament, you get the Joseph Smith translation. And it runs, if you can see here, it runs the same as it would... So we've got Matthew there, and then it goes over to like Mark. So it runs the same way as it would in the New Testament. So if you want to find that, that's just at the back. If you're on an electronic device, it's listed under New Testament. It's just at the back of that. Um, so we want John. Right, so in Luke, John. So Joseph Smith's translation of this, because you remember this came from Greek and Old English and then sort of Newer English, and it's like, uh, it doesn't really fit. So yeah. Um, because obviously John did not speak Greek, he wrote it in Hebrew, um, perhaps even Latin, some of it, so that it's, it gets lost in translation. But yeah, in the beginning was the gospel preached through the Son, so that's the word, the word of God, is the gospel preached through Jesus Christ. And the gospel was the word, and the word was with the son, and the son was with God, and the son was of God. As in, like, it's all connected in together. It's all there. Um, the same was in the beginning, or things are made not by, and then, like, it, in him was the gospel, and the gospel was the life. So they're talking about, like, the word or the light is the gospel. Um, and the light shineth in the world, and the world perceiveth it not. So if you're, like, and Joseph Smith, unfortunately, um, was like killed before he got to finish this but there is some really good stuff for Matthew, Mark, Luke and John um, it kind of is a little bit in Hebrew so there's a little bit there he wanted to do more I would have liked to have heard more from him on Revelation which John wrote as well there's a little bit there but um, he was told he had bigger work to do anyway but it's always interesting to look at the Joseph Smith translation if it says it and you'll notice that in the footnotes it will say it um, it will direct you to that uh, we'll see, see if you can see here, here's John, I don't know if you can see this, we'll try up in here, where is it, there, see, it says J-S-T, that's Joseph Smith translation, so if you're wondering what that is, that's at the end of the New Testament, and that gives you just, um, sort of like a, and it's not really that modern, because it's nearly 200 years old, but it gives you like a more modern wording on what that means, helps you understand it, so, just Christ is the word, what does that mean? It means it's his gospel and he came to testify that he is the Christ. So in literally turning up like he does for us every time we need him. We call on him, he comes. He will help us. We might not recognize exactly what he looks like um, or he might send someone else, but he will turn up and that is the word, the gospel. Um, and the gospel, as we said, is simple. It's not complicated. It's very, very simple. He made it very simple. And in his ministry, he taught his gospel. So if you're ever like stuck, even now, with like, what do we do with this? Go back and look at what Christ taught in the New Testament. Look at his parables. Look at his teachings. Look at that. Because that, if you can get a good base knowledge of that, is going to help you in so many scenarios. Those parables still apply so much today. And boy, am I looking forward to teaching them. They apply so much today in so many different situations. So they are gold. Honestly, go there. Now, the quote I've got for this one is from C.S. Lewis. And yes, I know he's not a church member, but it just was really good. He said, the son of God became a man to enable men to become sons of God. Sons meaning sons and daughters here, or however you identify people. 
so. But it's just like, yeah, the Son of God became a man to ensure mankind to become sons of God, sons and daughters, whoever of God. And that was really nice. So it's, I love that. Um, so yeah, Christ is the word. What does this mean? That's what it means. Christ is the gospel. He came to witness of himself and being just him and just being here and being him was his witness of himself. So I think it's really nice. And just like that bold opening, it just shows you kind of more about who John was and how he just loved Christ and had such faith from the very beginning. So he starts there, but he's retelling from the future. So we'll uh, read on what happens and who else he meets. So hang around and I'll see you for insight number two.